Eric from Wisconsin Fishing here. I'm here with Lee Young from Lee's Floats. And uh, today I picked up a nice gift box from Lee of floats and tools and just a little bit of everything uh, to help me get through my next uh, fishing season. And I'd like to talk to Lee a little bit about that. So, Lee, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. And uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to make you some floats. Um, <laughs> we have perfect float fishing conditions today. Absolutely. Uh, we had planned this a little while ago and hopefully we were looking for a warm water outlet, but we're, we're at a balmy, positively sweltering 9 degrees Fahrenheit here today. Couldn't be better conditions, it really couldn't be. As a consequence, be. there's not a lot of <laughs> unsolid water. It's no. kind of white and dry rather than wet and cold. Absolutely, yeah, so. unfortunately. Yeah, I got a lot of the white stuff around us today. Yeah. Um, so, Lee, you've been building floats uh, for yourself for many years now, and, and you've recently decided to start sharing the wealth and, and selling them to people all over the country so how did you how did you get started what made you decide to start building floats for yourself I, I find it very therapeutic yeah. just to actually make something that I'm gonna use and will help me catch more fish and there's a lot of floats on the market and it's kind of like bass lures you know there are an awful lot of lures for bass fishing but 90% of them are really designed to catch bass anglers Agreed, rather yeah. than bass the fish yeah uh, so what I was looking at was floats that really work for me in Wisconsin, in the upper Midwest, for the types of fishing I do, and that's primarily uh, salmonids, steelhead browns, but some rainbows, some salmon from time to time, carp, love them because they're a big hard fighting fish, Absolutely. but also uh, channel catfish, walleye at time, we've got some geese coming out, <laughs> walleye at time are just the only way to really catch them efficiently is by float. Um, and, and you know, panfish are just so much fun to catch on the float. So I, I was agree. looking to build on designs and experience that I had from fishing around the world, but to make them particularly specific and valuable for Wisconsin and upper Midwest fishing. That's great. So you're using materials in these floats that are almost all natural. Um, yeah. They're ethically sourced and uh, recycled in many ways. Yeah. I mean, so if, tell if, us a little about that. If I, I just show one of these at, at random. Sure. So this is a Cape porcupine quill uh, all the way from South Africa. Uh, friends in South Africa who have ethically, ethically sourced these Cape porcupine quills. So sometimes the porcupine is a bit too slow crossing the road. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so his quills go to a good cause, in this case, helping me make a float. And the base of this, the body of this float or bobber, is made out of uh, a used wine cork. Oh. And that's actually fun for me because I like to drink the wine and I get to recycle the cork. So that's for perfect. me, it's all win. Yeah, win-win for everybody. Um, but, you know, on a, a more serious note, cork is a, it's a great resource. Um, it's an amazing natural product. Locks in a, a fair amount of carbon dioxide in the bark of the tree. It's a cork oak tree bark. Yeah. And so it makes sense rather than to throw it into landfill to recycle it wherever possible. That's great. And so that's that's what I do. This this float is basically a Cape porcupine quill with a used wine cork shaped and uh, stuck in, in the base there to give a float that has a fair amount of sensitivity in the tip and enough weight shot loading to be able to cast a reasonable distance. Yeah perfect little float for a lot of our fishing in Wisconsin. Lakes, slow moving rivers, up to maybe 10 foot deep. That's great. Yep. Yeah, that's great. How do people get a hold of you to if they, you know, they see something here on your website or on the Facebook page, uh, how do they get a hold of you to... Just message me just message on you. Lease Floats, Lease Floats. Um, and I'll get back to you. That's great. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy to make to any design anybody wants. I have some wild and wacky designs of my own. Yes, yeah. Um, I've seen but a few. I will, you know, if someone's got a specific need, I've got a buddy at the moment who's doing a lot of uh, predator fishing, um, northern pike fishing, and sure. he wants a certain type of pencil pike float that's quite sensitive for some of the bigger pike that he's, he's running up against. And so I'm building him some floats that he can't get anywhere else in the world. That's great. So it's kind of fun that I will turn out a design and then he'll tweak it with me and we'll come up with a, an eventual product that yeah. he's happy to use and endorse. A lot of creative creativity behind the building process and designing process for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you can certainly go to any tackle shop anywhere in the world and buy a basic bobber that will do a basic job. Yeah. And we'll do that quite well. And the difference is sometimes is when all the standard tactics aren't working and the fish are a little 
finicky, and finesse is the key word. Finesse is when you need something specific to do the job. Right. So we were talking earlier about, um, you know, it's one thing to see the pictures of them. You take beautiful pictures of all the floats uh, that you build, but it's another thing to actually hold it in your hand and see it in person. And you can tell just just when you hold on to it, you pick it up for the first time. These are built to last. They're built with care. They're high quality. Um, these weren't these weren't just turned out in mass numbers. Uh, no, e for the average angler. each one these is are... individually handcrafted. Exactly, and I, I, I like the thought of if I was to show the float to my dad and he liked it, I would give him the float. Yeah, there would be something that I'd be proud to show to him. Exactly, they're not perfect, and that's because they're made out of used and then recycled materials. Right, but that in itself is a good thing. I mean, you know, they're actually perfect for the job. But yeah, the, some of them have maybe got a little nick in them, or the cork is a little worn on one side because of how it was pulled out of the wine bottle. Right. But I still shape it and secure it and, and basically build a, a covering around it to keep it stable and, and make it fish effectively. That's but amazing. you're right, it's a, almost holding them in the hand is uh, <laughs> it's a different experience it, than, it just, really is. than just fishing with a normal bobber that you might have bought in the shop. Yeah. You build a variety of floats at a variety of price points. Um, what, what are we talking for cost range here? Um, well, because I'm recycling, um, I have a little bit to do with each of the components, whether it be a goose quill or whether it be a porcupine quill, whether it be a piece of cork. I have a little bit of time spent just to stabilize that recycled component. Yeah. Um, so my prices are a little more reflective of the hand crafting I put into it, but they primarily start around $5 for a float that really is robust. I yeah. mean, it's kind of hard to bust. Oh, yeah. This is going to last uh, a lot longer. And will fish a lot longer than your average little balsa yep. bobber from, from a shop. Exactly. So they, they start about $5, and they go all the way up to $11, $12, $13 for some of my big, giant sea fishing floats. Right. Um, just because the amount of materials and therefore the amount of prep I have to do to make those materials stable and give them the strength yeah. so that you can fish, fish with finesse but you don't have to worry about you know, treating it with kid gloves and wrapping <laughs> it in, in cloth or whatever. You can yeah. actually use it and fish with it right. and get enjoyment out of it. I mean, it's handcrafted, not mass produced, so... You yep, each one is to touched by me, <laughs> these pairs of this pair of hands. Yeah, so it comes with a little yeah. extra fish catching mojo in every, in every float you buy. <laughs> Could um, be. So you're not just making floats now either, you're also doing uh, different fishing tools um, we have the, the hook removers, and we also have the baiting needles. Yes. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about okay. those? Well, the hook remover. Oops. Oh, excuse me. A second. The hook remover. Um, just a really neat tool for an angler who finds that, they're, particularly panfish, they often have. If you're using a smaller hook and maybe a maggot or a waxworm, yep. they'll suck it back to the throat, and so the hook's out of sight. And you can maybe just get your fingers on the end of the, the, the bend or the end of the eye of the hook. Yeah. This basically, you just trap the line in the little groove, slide it down, uh, apply a small amount of pressure at the bend, and it will just release. Pops right out. Um, and just having this kind of double peanut shape means that however it comes to your hands, you'll grip it naturally and effectively. Yeah. If your hands, like mine are right now, quite cold. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, and if your hands are wet, it doesn't matter. You'll still be able to get a good grip, be able to look after the fish, and, and obviously, you know, we some of us fish to eat and some of us fish for the, the thrill of it and the fun of it. But it's nice if you catch a small fish to so be able to get that hook out cleanly, efficiently, not hurt the fish, put him or her back to grow bigger for the next person. Yeah, I agree. And, and a, a de hooking device like this is great. And they float, so yes. you're eventually going to drop this in the water. You don't have to worry about you it. You kind of want you bright colors and a yeah. contrast in colors, <laughs> exactly. and you want it to uh, be floating. Yeah. Same thing goes with the baiting needles. And those are four different sizes, I believe? Um, I can really make them in any size up to humongous. You wouldn't want to spear yourself with that in your thumb because <laughs> right. it would be a trip to the emergency room. I, I generally recommend um, smallest sizes around uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 millimeters. Sure. That's fine enough to catch a, a piece of line for the hair and the biggest size is maybe about one and a half millimeters and that'd be the for, i would use that for northern pike fishing with big eel section baits big yeah. oily bits of round <laughs> section of fish and punch it through you know a sturdy bait right where a big needle will allow you to get a big hook hold in it and it won't come off yeah exactly but yeah that's that's what they're for and again that kind of peanut shape allows you to hold it as a pencil or pen style right or get a good grip on it if your hands are cold and 
yeah, it's comfortable, wet. comfortable for everybody. Yeah. Another thing you're, you're you're doing are the marker floats, which I'm really excited to try these out as well. Um, extremely buoyant, uh, extremely durable, and really lightweight, so you can cast these a long distance. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, they're, they're aerodynamically designed to go through the air uh, really well. Um, having a bulb on the back rather than flights. You will see some of these made commercially out of plastic with flights on them. Um, I personally find that having this slight residual buoyancy here and just this bulb actually helps the flight of the float yeah. when it's a crosswind. Okay. When it's a straight wind coming in or going out, it doesn't matter. Flights are great. But when you've got a crosswind, you'll sometimes find the float and the lead that you're using to put the marker out there will drift off down uh, down the wind. Yeah. This allows you to cast a little bit straighter. Um, they have, um, most of my floats that have eyes in the bottom of them, and these are no exception, are made with a marine brass eye. Yes. Um, so it's a real strong, sturdy eye. It's actually connected inside the float body, up inside the porcupine quill into the, into the um, cork, and then uh, a, stur a sturdy whipping placed on there. So these actually also work great for sea fishing. So if you're looking to get some floats, if you'd like to contact Lee, look him up on Facebook, Lee's Floats. Um, he'll be happy to respond and does so in a very timely manner. Um, and really, again, anything you could ever want for a fishing float, Lee probably has it designed, and if he doesn't, he'll be happy to work with you. Uh, you do custom colors. Yes. Whatever color, he will he will uh, yeah. personalize the floats for you. Yeah, I've got some um, some customers who like pink. There's a kind of a, like a salmon pink color, sure. which the light's now going for us, but at this time of day, um, you can sometimes find that that salmon pink kind of really holds on to that last sun better oh, than any other color. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of colors we can do. I actually also have a bunch of buddy float makers around the world, all handcraft floats. So if I can't make it, or I'm not, the, let's say the best person to make it, and you have a, a real custom need, I will know someone who can help you. Yeah, oh, that's great. You can help people source. Yep. If you can't do it, you'll find somebody who can. That's yep. fantastic.